today, I mean, listen, we got all fellas over here who got great experience in this topic, and I think it's going to be dope. The topic for today is what makes a woman submissive? I don't know. You want to start off? <laughs> <Nothing>. <laughs> I mean, I think I think the ideology that a woman should be submissive when she feels safe, she feels secure, she feels reassured. Um, that's what it should be. You know what I'm saying? The fact that she has a house, you know, a roof over her head, she has food in the refrigerator, you know, her needs are are, are taken care of. I think women operate best when they are safe. Whereas sometimes with men, we operate in our best when there's chaos. You got to understand, like, if we're, in a, if we're in a war zone and bombs are flying, like I've been, I'm an Iraqi war veteran, and bombs are flying, you, you get a different gear when things are chaotic as a man. Your adrenaline gets going and you, and you reach a different height. With women, I think it's the exact opposite. When they're safe, when they're secure, when they feel that, you know, everything is okay, that's when their submissive feminine side comes out. And I think uh, that's the, the, you know, the gist of, of what submission is supposed to be. Uh, you know, of course, we have a, a couple of women that have problems with it these days because I think the main <laughs> misconception is submission is slavery. When all in actuality, all it is is respect. Oh, just respect me. The same way you respect your boss at work. If he tells you, hey, go take those boxes and move them to the back, you do it. If he tells you to be at work an hour early, you do it. If he tells you to stay an hour late, you do it with no questions asked. But here's this brother at home that's willing to put his life on the line. Because you gotta understand, when you love a woman, I'm willing to die for you. If someone is to come in this room, come in this house and try to harm us, they're gonna have to get rid of me before they get rid of you. So, you telling me that you can't go down here and make me a sandwich? Or you can't <laughs> give me some peace and quiet when I've been working 12 and 13 hours a day? And I think that's where we kind of cross the lines of submission where women think that it's slavery when, when all it is is we want the same respect that you give your boss at, 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 the, at the job. Maybe they're slaves to their boss. For sure. That's why, that's why they, that's why well, they, you know, the job, you they know, computed the, the same. The term job was not invented until after slavery was over, after they yeah. freed the slaves and all of a sudden now they got this job term. All right, cool. Well, you sit there and do whatever this other man tells you to do. He can, it's a problem for me. If I'm in, if I am laying at home in, in bed with my woman and another man can call her, get her up, make her get dressed, get in the shower and drive 20, 30 minutes on the other side of the, uh, 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 of the city and go do what he wants her to do. But I can't get you to go downstairs and fix me something to eat. Now, I, I don't need too much because, you know, I, I ain't missed too many meals. But if I'm hungry, I'm hungry, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think it's too much to ask. So I think uh, I think in today's society with a lot of modern women, they, they just kind of misconstrue what submission is. I mean, submission is just respect. Respecting that man, you know, hear, hearing, you know, attending to his needs just the way he tends to your needs. Sure. I mean, I, I, I was going to say that to begin with. I think that it is start it does start with and stem with and stays with respect. For sure. It's hard, though, when a lot of men aren't respected. Hmm. But, like, there's a reason why he's not respected. You know what I'm saying? And I think that um, safety doesn't make a woman submissive either. I think there's a lot of girls who aren't safe with a man, but he, but she respects him, so she's more submissive. Mm. I do think that there's a somewhat of a submissiveness um, that comes with women when she has appreciation and gratitude for what he does for her, but that don't make her really submissive through, with respect which means that the second he stops doing what he's doing for her is the second that respect goes out the window. I mean, the second that submissiveness goes out the w window. You know what I'm saying? Simply because it's based off appreciation and gratitude. Um, so you think it's transactional? Though There is a transactional yeah. submissiveness that does happen, but it's, it's temporary. And is that, so it's transactional submissiveness. Would that be considered true? Is she really submissive? If the only way that she is going to respect me is if I pay her bills every month, is she really submissive or is she playing? She's not role? respecting you. Mm. Appreciate you. It's a big difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A appreciation and respect are not always synonymous. In my opinion. Mm. Can yeah. I get can I, a pimp and Ken taking a sip? That, <laughs> can I just drop it? <laughs> well, you know, for disclosure, I don't have problems with submission, you know. <laughs> I mean, my food is cooked on time, you know. Uh, if I want peace, I get peace. If I ask my folks to do something, she's going to do. 
exactly what I asked you to do. You know, we don't have no problems. Of course, we have arguments. You know, we have disagreements. But on the submissive, you know, some women, you know, I, I always believe, and I, I break it down like this to most of our young men because, you know, they don't really understand what's going on. You know, nine times out of ten, you know, you have to get in a woman's head before you get in her bed. You know what I'm saying? Submissive, this uh, control, all this started with the mind. So, you know, if you don't get into her mind first, it's going to be hard for you to get her body to follow. You know, and uh, one must understand that uh, it is a process. You know, it's the successions of events. You know, it got a lot to do with the way you treat her, the way you uh, treat yourself. Because me and our actors and women are reactors. Generally, a woman is a reflection of a man. You know, so if a man has a certain uh, decor, a certain character about himself, you know, he usually has that kind of woman. I, I, I tell you money all the time on the show. I say it's hard for me to cheat because I can't find a woman that match my rhythm. Hey. So when I try to find a woman that do what my woman do, it's gonna be hard to find somebody that's gonna cook for you. That's gonna, you know, be respectful. Ain't trying to go out, and be out in the clubs. See, my woman don't do all that. She don't go out and be in the clubs. She don't be all hanging out with bras and all that stuff. Cause she know I don't like that, and she know that I don't respect that. So I got, I got order in my house, you know. And uh, but it took, it took a long time, you know, to, to establish myself. Sometimes, you know, you just have to, you know, say, hey, I'm, I'm not with this, and you might have to step, remove yourself from the situation for a while. And then that person do some thinking, you do some thinking, they say, okay, you know what? I get your point. You know, you got a good point. You know what I mean? It probably ain't best that I'm hanging around with people that ain't on the same level that we are. You know, that's not trying to uh, have some money and trying to progress in life, you know? And I think 99.9% .9 of the time, a lot of women that are not submissive because they have women, friends that are unsubmissive. And they tell them, like, and they be unmarried women, you know, men, women that don't even have a man. But they tell them, girl, F that dude. You know, girl, this dude ain't that. This person ain't that. You know, but they don't even have a man to, or a barometer to even match what they saying. They just mm -hmm. saying it because, you know, they feel that it's the right thing to say. They got every man ain't no good. Every dog, every man's a dog, but they don't even have a man. So how can you call a man a dog when you don't even have a dog in that fight? So I think that once you get into a woman's head, you know, it's a mental thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you got to, and another thing, they got to have something to submit to, too. You know, you got to be a progressive person. You got to be winning on some level. You got to be respected on some level, you know. If my woman go anywhere with me and she see everybody, hey, baby King, got to take a picture, got to take a picture, got to take a picture, she understands that these people respect me. And she understands that, you know, this man deserves respect because he gets the respect everywhere he go. And then, you know, my intelligence level is high, you know. I mean, I had a situation where I had a, a, a civil case and, the lawyer tried to charge me twenty thousand, and you know I got I got I, I we got a little game we play. I said, yeah, I'm your Johnny Cochran now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, yeah, no, you're Johnny Cochran. Then I give a speech. I said, yeah, I'm your Malcolm X now. You know, we we it's a joke we play. I said, yeah, you made Malcolm X, uh, 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 Johnny Cochran, uh, Muhammad Ali. You made all them niggas in one. You know, cause that's <laughs> who I am. I'm all them in one. And I actually uh, filed an appeal myself. I, 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 adjudicated my own case. So, you know, it's just, it's just that type of stuff that, but then you got to always renew your relationship. You can't, you got to reinvent yourself. You know, that'll make a woman respect and submit to you. That's what, what so what happens, what happens when you do all those things? When the financial, the mental, the physical, you, 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 you're healthy in all, all aspects, and she still does it. I only got to ask them suckers that. Exactly. <laughs> and that's when I get to drop the bomb. I don't have a problem. Dropping the bomb. <laughs> you I know. Can't tell you what's, what's yeah. up with them I can't tell you what don't work. Yeah, like that's that's what I get to drop. You know, my, my you know, our platform, me and Ken is on. A lot of times we talk about when the man is doing the right thing, right? And and it's easy for a woman to to water a man down if she is looking at all he is not and what he is. You know, instead of appreciating who he is as a man, if you're always looking at what he's not, oh, well, you know, he doesn't have a six pack. Okay, cool. But he got six cars. Or, oh, well, he doesn't make six figures, but, you know, he's got six different businesses that are on the rise. And if you're always looking at the negative of everything, 
then you're never going to be able to appreciate the positive, as you said, the appreciation thing. And in appreci- I think appreciation breeds respect, but in actuality, a man, it's hard for me as a man to feel love from a woman if she doesn't respect me. Because that's how I feel like, well, if you love me, then why would you talk to me like that? If my mother didn't talk to me like this, my mother didn't call me out of my name, my mother didn't, 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 didn't say these things that, that, that some women say to their men. You know, a lot of men get treated worse at home than they get treated out in the street. I mean, so you mean to tell me that we could go out in the street and a brother ain't going to walk up to you and call you out your name crazy because what? It's going to be something. There is a threat of violence if you disrespect the man. But if you go home and this five-foot woman is going to call you everything but a child of God, that's respect. Well, I, mean, I always felt like don't pump, don't puff your chest out to me if you can't wear the pants in your relationship. Amen. I don't care who you are. If you can't control your household, don't come to me and try to puff your chest up at me because you frustrated. Then the police protect women these For days. Sure. That's, that's 100% you, true. So you have to be able to walk away sometimes. So, but I also do think that um, I'm not allowing shit to fly like that. I mean, <laughs> so... So I don't like I, I never had that issue. Like I'm on my pimp and kin. I never had an issue with a woman not being submissive to me. Mm. Thirty one years, three decades I walked on this earth. A lot of women I've been with. I've never had that situation. I've never been called out my name by a woman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I could say that wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? So, um That's a beautiful thing. You need to write a book. No, I mean, so, I, I, it's I, a lot of men out here that wanna <laughs> that need to hear that one. Cause I, but I'm just I, saying, you know, you know, I mean, I'm 42, and uh, and, and given I've had I've had amazing women, and I've had some submissive women. I've had some women that you know had to find their way with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's just it's just a case by case basis. Some women have never had a positive male influence in their life, so they don't even know how to love a man properly. They don't know how to respect the man because they've never had a good example. Example. Mm-hmm. Their daddy won't, you know, him nothing. Their baby daddy won't nothing. The guy that the last guy that they dated did them wrong. So they have all of this resentment towards the male species. And so when you come and you're the first good nigga she's ever met, she don't know how to love you. She don't know how to talk to you. She don't know how to. How to why treat would you. you be over there? Why are you take a good product Ooh, to a boy. bad environment? This don't make sense. You're right. I feel right. You, you can't like like. And if, we gotta take we we have to take accountability as men, and sometimes we do pick wrong. I mean, yeah, but picking wrong and picking terrible is not the same, mm. right? I could pick the wrong woman or at the wrong time, but I could pick a terrible person that's gonna help to help be my destruction, right? I, I think there's a big difference. I'm not listen. I had a lot of failed relationships too, right. so I picked wrong technically, right, right. right? They didn't last, but I didn't pick terrible, right? You know what I'm saying? I just picked wrong. You know what I'm saying? This how I was didn't work with her. You know, maybe how she was didn't work with me. Sure. Whatever the case may be, but I didn't pick terrible. I didn't pick a girl who's gonna. Well, well, I think I think we never think that we pick terrible at first. How don't I mean, you? The, the you first, do? first, the first. I mean, the first. We all, you know, women send representatives just like men do. I mean, yeah, the first honeymoon period or whatever. She's amazing. You know, she's cooking. She's she cooking, different. She's doing. She's. <laughs> she, oh man, I really like this girl. She's different, right? Yeah, and the, until the insecurities might step in or something that triggers her or whatever might bring out a different side of her or whatever. And then you're like, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed up for. But unfortunately, I'm already invested in this relationship. And I didn't know, uh, uh, you know, 90 days ahead of time that you were like this, that, that you could, when you do get angry, how you react. When you do get upset, that you get violent. When you, you know what I'm saying? And like, you start acting like an op when you feel emotionally hurt even though it may not be logical, you don't tell me that on the first date, like, hi, my name's Amy, and I will call the police on you if I catch you cheating on me. No, we don't get that. Hmm, And so, unfortunately, it's just you got to kind of go through it, and when you see those red flags, it's like, okay, now we have to make adjustments, in my opinion. That's what I did. I had to, like, oh, I didn't sign up for this. This isn't who I I agreed to date. So, hey, I'm going to let you know that this this, this isn't what I like. And if you can't change it, then I'm going to have to roll. And I think that's cool. But if a man continues to stay there, that's where I think that it, get, it gets the terrible situation. Because why are you staying in a situation that you know is not fruitful for you? See, I think it's important to highlight that we also communicate differently, yeah, men sure. and women. So if you want that respect 
or you, you feel you deserve that respect that you have to make sure that you go into it saying, what is it going to take for you to be submissive mm. and match that from the gate? Yep. That way you're not wasting your time and two years go by and honeymoon stage is over or whatever. Yeah. Have you, yeah. Because you know? if you if you if you go in the game and you say the word submissive and she and she kind of frowns her face then mm. you already know, like, hey, you know what? It's probably best that I go ahead and step out, mm -hmm. you know, not waste my time. But once again. If if you are a person of, of, of status or affluence or, or certain financial status, a woman will, she will bring her representative. Hey, I want to be able to have access to what he has. I want to be able to have access to his network, to his knowledge, to his money, to his status, or whatever you know he's got going on. So I'm going to play the game. But if, a, a person can only play a role but so long. You know, undercover officers, they, they can only, eventually you're going to blow your cover. And a lot of times women are undercover, I feel. And then when, when, when something traumatizing or something, a trial or tribulation happens, then they blow their cover and they're like, oh, that's the real you. And I'm like, you were a wolf the whole time. You were just in sheep's clothing. And I just didn't know. Well, we got to, you know, we got to get out of here. Somebody's going to get ate. I think that everybody appreciates things that they earn. I like that. So if you... If I hand you a thousand dollars, you're not going to treat it the same as if you work forty hours for that thousand dollars. So I think the same thing goes in a relationship. You know, I like every relationship I had. My girl had to earn different parts of me, right? Maybe she had to be more submissive. Maybe she had to cook more. Maybe she had to pay attention to details. And then I was able to reciprocate different things. So then, um, I I I don't believe anybody should just get anything off the off the off the gate. I don't. Just like respect isn't given. So does she come back to you and say, oh, you're giving me bare minimum? Um, I don't know if I, I, I can't say, I don't know the last time or if I ever did hear that. Right. Um, but I knew when my, sometimes your bare minimum is, a, is somebody else's right. first right. time, yeah. yeah, first time, you know, top of the line experience. So um, there, are, there have been times where I did give the bare minimum or I went through the motions. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I might have tapped out of the relationship at a, at a point in time, you know, for different reasons. Um, I know I, my first time I got a big check, I tapped out of my relationship, but that was really just because I let the money yeah. want me to. Hey. I thought I could buy the world. For sure. You know, I, and honestly, growing up how I grew up, I wanted to experience the world. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I did give her the bare minimum 100%, whether or not it was said, but I know she probably felt it. You know what I'm saying? But but that was the thing that I respected about her even after that whole situation is that she never wavered and my actions never broke her character. I like that. Right? So that's you a, know and that's a strong woman. I mean, I think that's a that's a woman. See what James got to say? I'm, I'm, yeah, James, come on. Looking looking old. Old. She tried to get out of trouble. Uh, <laughs> James, are you married, James? <laughs> no, I'm not married. Uh and I'm probably not gonna be married, but you know, that's just well, I look at the statistical data on marriage. Uh, yeah. And the percentage of uh, divorces out here now, as opposed to happily married, you know, actually LGBT marriages are trumping heterosexual marriages now because they're being promoted more in our society. Damn. So, um, but I'm, I'm not against marriage. If I mar if I met the right woman, you know, uh, like Ken said, you know, it's very hard to find that type of woman that, you know, uh, would align. That's good. Turn it turn it up too, like towards you. Oh, there okay, you go. Okay, all right, all right. You know, like Ken said, you know, it's, it's very hard to find a woman um, in our society now that could match up to the criteria of what, you know, a real man really deserves because this whole feminist ideology has, you know, contaminated a lot of um, <laughs> the, the women. You know, even in the uh, a college curriculum, you know, if, if you're, if the, that 75% ratio of divorce goes up to 93% with a woman who has a college degree. Mm -hmm. So there, there's a, there's an institution in our education, you know, um, department that is um, encouraging this feminist ideology as well. Oh, get your degree, don't worry about no man, and all these other things. So, and then you know, like the friends, you know, that if if, the, if our friends are, you know, yeah. it's very very hard. I I know a lot of females now who say, man, I should have never listened to the, to my friends because they was always single. Mm -hmm. I had a shot over here with this guy. But they convinced me to get rid of him too, you know. And it's too now they can't even go back to that guy anymore. So you know, it's very hard with the overwhelming influence of society, the girls, you know, and then the system. 
it's it's almost it's overwhelming to the point where it's it's you know like you would think that I would be able to you know find a good woman right you know yeah. education looks everything you know I'm I'm coming you know rolling like like Ken you know everything's lining up you know but you know even that is not enough anymore sometimes mm-hmm. you know and what I'm looking for man you know I'm looking for the one and I'm a, I'm gonna get it yeah. you know <laughs> I'm not on the radar of that, that woman yet but I'm, I'm gonna get it but. It's not even about that. You know, I'm, I'm really focusing on making things happen and everything like that. Um, but you know, I think I think it really comes down to a respect level too. I got a question for you, James. Right? Yeah. Do you think you can find the one, or do you think you have to create the one, or build the one? Well, you know, when I come to the table, I'm, I'm ready. You know, and I, I'm I'm looking for somebody that's that's ready too, ready to get down with my program as well. You know. We could discuss and negotiate things, you know, but overall, I think that a woman has to be in a frame of mind of, of not only submission, but respect and understanding, you know, so that's hard to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can make some adjustments. What about, what about, do you think, do you I think it's hard to find um, collectively as a whole, as, as in every country, city, or is it an issue here where we're at? And let me speak to that because, uh, you know, as I travel to various uh, places and stuff like that, one thing I know is, is that this is an anglicized, Europeanized mentality. You know what I mean? Mostly, you know, the Europeans talk about monogamy, right? But in a lot of African societies and Muslim societies, it's polygamy, right? So a lot of times, you know, it is a lot of submissiveness going on around the world within various cultures. However, when you get to the United States, because of the laws and the legislations, you know, domestic violence and stuff like that. Women have been empowered on so many different levels, you know, and uh, the brother's talking about the LGBT community. You know, I respect the LGBT community for one reason, because, you know, when you look at CNN, you see a Anderson Cooper, you see a Don Lemon, you know, you see them in that orbit, you know, working their agenda, you know, and so men that believe in high value men, alpha men have to have alpha men in those agendas and those spaces in that media where we control the narrative. Until we control the narrative, until we understand what's really going on, we understand the value of polygamy or the value of submissiveness, it's gonna to continue to persist as we see it today because a lot of the men have been what I call, uh, I got in my book, The Art of Human Chess, I say women's job is to, uh, to break a man down. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and that's because that's her defense mechanism you know, God gave a woman strength, the same thing he gave us funk. White stripe in the belly full of funk. She's gonna give you a whole lot of funk. You know what I mean? She's gonna test you from day one to day two, right? Because that's how she figure out if you're a real man or not. But if you don't stand on it, if you don't stand on principles, and you know, like I said, you know, even the case with my people, right? If she get to acting too irate or she get too disrespectful, I just walk away because I know the system is is stacked against me. I know she can get me from domestic violence. Or, you know, because it's really, like they said, feminism is a no-contact sport. I really believe that. Relationships is a non-contact sport. So mm-hmm. I try to keep my hands to myself because I know that that's one of the traps of the European. That's one of the traps that the people who want to anglicize the Europeanized relationships because they can only control one woman at a time. They can't say we as African kings can't control. We control thousands and hundreds of women, but they don't like that. You know what I mean? And if you look at the, 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 the statistics and you look at the culture, this is a acculturated mentality that is fostered here in the United States specifically. You know what I mean? In some societies, you know, especially in, in societies where, you know, there are people like black and brown people, uh, you know, disrespect, uh, uh, a lack of submissiveness, not so much. You know, you go to Europeans, you know, nations, you know, because they, I mean, in a lot of ways, man, because of lack of melanin, which is what we have in our body, you know, which creates uh, intellectual motor skills. You know, because we have so much melanin, we have 12, we have 11 pigments. The only thing close to us is the chimpanzee, he had 12 pigments, and the European only have five pigments. Their mental stamina is not as strong as ours, you know what I'm saying? And we also have the true weapon of mass destruction. So it's, it, it, it is a concerted, and it is a specific uh, task and uh, plot to keep the black man and the black woman, the black man and the black woman few. Sure, you know, because if you can keep them few and you can keep the family divided, 
you know, I talk to ugly money about this all the time. You know, if you look at the, the single parent home, right, where, you know, the women do, don't want to submit, right, and they want to be alpha females, right, look what's happening. Who raising the killers? Who raising the killers? <laughs> if, if there's no fathers in the house and all these dudes is robbing and killing and selling drugs, what is the, where is this problem coming from? It's coming from you, sisters. You know what I mean? Then they got to understand, too, it's a big thing that's going on. It's a white woman just got incarcerated, her and her husband, because their kid killed four people. Because he killed four people, they're charging the parent with the murder. Now, imagine what's going to happen in the black community when it finally resonates. Mm -hmm. Now, this is president. The president has said there's going to be a lot of unsubmissive black women who refuse to have a black man who can control the household in that household that's going to be getting incarcerated because... Your child just shot up the block. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, you should have knew better. They're like, well, I don't know better. Well, we just locked the white woman up. You don't think we're going to lock your black butt up? So you know what I mean? <laughs> black women and black men got to understand, man, that, you know, the reason why we have so many killings is because the lack of a submissive woman, the lack of a man in the household. Bro, newsflash. Uh, 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 the statistics is so high in terms of a, 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 a single parenting family Right? Okay, if that's the truth, and we got all this killing, we got all this dope dealing, all these young criminals, who raising them? The females. I ain't raising, uh, well, <laughs> well, I raised mine, but, but yeah. my homie said he ain't raising his, she don't even pick up his phone call. Yep. You know, 80%, 80% of, the, of the jails are single parent households. Mm -hmm. That's 80%. Because 80%. the father's not at home. Exactly. You know, and, and, and you look at the statistics, a child that's raised in a two-parent household is does you know statistically better than a child in a one-parent household, and a child that's raised by his father is closer to a two-parent household than versus by his mother. It's just statistics; like you can't you can't alter the facts. The facts are the facts, and it's it's not saying that I, I, I'm never here to. Say, I love women. I love the black. I love black women. I love <laughs> everything about y'all. I just want black women to love us. Black women to appreciate us, black women to respect us. So that way we can work together to establish things like generational wealth and success and things of that nature. Because the last time I checked, success is a team sport. You know what I'm saying? Jordan ain't win no championships without Pippen. Okay, well, if I'm Jordan, or you can be Jordan, baby. Don't forget Let me Robin. Be Don't forget Robin. Or Robin. <laughs> but we, need, we, we, need, we need to have some kind, everybody needs to understand their role so we can be successful in this household so we can ring some, win some rings. And if every if she just thinks that she can just do it all on her own and she doesn't need you know Rodman's rebounding, well, I see how many championships he won without Pittman. None. Mm -hmm. Can I make a suggestion? Go ahead, brother. Can we bring our Latino brother in, James? Oh yeah, 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 Come on in, come on in, Gonzalez. We want to see what y'all how it is in y'all culture. <laughs> what y'all having, y'all? Right, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if y'all did it. Did it. <laughs> the, Mexican, the Mexican ladies, the Mexican ladies, do, do, do they submit? Uh, come on, come on, go ahead, yeah. Got to swivel it, swivel it around. Oh. Excuse me. Let's see here. What are we doing? I get to jump in here. That's cool. Oh, uh, the Latin bring, women. Bring the mic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're feisty. Yeah. Feisty and spicy, man. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the Latino culture, brother. Well, the Latin culture, well, you know. Do y'all women submit? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's part of our culture, but but then again, they get they got to see a man. Yeah, they have to see a man. They got to see somebody that can handle themselves. You know what I mean? But sometimes we get involved with women when we're young. You know, we start off young. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, facts. You know, that's probably yeah, yeah, definitely yeah, a fact. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Twelve. Yep. Yeah, Twelve, yeah, thirteen, like fourteen. Living exactly. But sometimes when when you start off too young and uh. I had this experience. Sometimes they 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 kind of look at you like you family, family. Mm. And I used to be like, "Hey, I ain't your dad or your brother. You ain't gonna be talking." You know what I mean? Like, I will leave. Like, I ain't got. We ain't got. We, this, we ain't family like this. We're not gonna. You know. So, yeah, it's different in the Latin culture. Yeah. You know, it's so funny or not funny. Something I realized too is that um, in the Latin culture, you see like a lot of women are hard workers. Yes. In, a, in a Latin culture, and I think that's a, a beautiful work thing. Ethic. Yeah, they have a great work work ethic. One thing I realized that we've kind of been lacking in our community is work ethic, I, really on men, men and women, right? But um, 
But, but there's also a lack of opportunity. Okay. Yeah, there is. Appreciate I'm that talking about African Americans. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah. trying to bail us out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, there's, there's a lack of opportunity. You know, uh, I grew up in Milwaukee. Well, it's the uh, southern, southeastern Wisconsin, Kenosha, Racine, and Milwaukee, three cities. You know, I'm, I'm well known in those areas. I met Ken, you know, I hate to say it's because it dates me. Well, I met Ken, you know, about, we've been great friends, almost brothers for, you know, 20 years. So, you know, the opportunities there are slim for us Latins as well. But when I moved to Texas, I started seeing a uh, vote for Judge Gonzalez. Judge Gonzalez, he ain't never seen no stuff like this in Milwaukee. Mm. And then I would travel and I go to Atlanta with Ken and I'll say, man, they got black judges out here. You start broadening your, your horizons and seeing opportunities. But, uh, you know, there is there is a lack, you know what I'm saying, of opportunity, though, for the African-American culture, bro. It really is. And I, down south, I mean, there's one more. In Texas, there's a lot of Mexicans. So we... We know how to move and groove, and we all and we all hungry. We're hard working, man. Like that's all I do is work. Like that's all I know. <laughs> so that's my, you know what I mean. So it's like, that's man, you culture, go down to Texas, man. You get in where you fit in, man. It's just like that. You know, but I, 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 that brings the question to me: Is it our job to create our opportunities? Though, right? It is hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 Boss Matic, it's yours. You created that. No one else did. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the fact that you've done what you've done with your your brand and and, and your motion is, is is something that you took control of your destiny. Correct, but that is also unorthodox. It's very rare sure. that you'll find a, a Latin or a Mexican American uh, to brand starting off in fragrance of footwear. That's unheard of. So I had to really think crazy outside the box and try to reach something that was almost unreachable, and never give up. And I succeeded. So. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just as hard as on men as, as I am on women. I think that uh, I think that we should be the masters of our own destiny. I gotcha. think that we should we should we should create our opportunities. You know, we all got 24 hours out the day. Hey, what you do with yours and what I do with mine is you know, was on me. But at the end of the day, if if, if I got if I got a pile of money and he doesn't, I did I did a little something better than he did. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, y y imagination. I mean, I think the one thing that that black people have that the whole world wants is culture and if we can't find a way to package that thing up and sell it then that's you know, why we got the hhf you know amen <laughs> amen you know what I'm saying? fraternity where we can all you know move and groove and, and synchronization with each other and work yeah and like like when when covid happened you saw the difference between people that were hustlers and the people that were just working because people that had conventional regular jobs they didn't do too well because you know the companies are shutting down, plants are shutting down, and things mm. of that nature. But me myself, I I jumped two tax brackets in college. Why? Because I'm a hustler. I'm, you know, I was I was an entrepreneur. I had an entrepreneurial spirit. I was able to see the gap in the market and be like, hey, there's nobody over here doing this type of stuff. So let me let me do that. And I think that I think that all brothers should knowing that how the the, the chips are stacked against us. Knowing that people don't want us to succeed in regular society, well, then it's time for you to take initiative and create your own opportunities because we know, you're right, there isn't a lot of opportunities for us. Right. Right? Some of us got jail records. Some of us aren't, may not be as, as educated as other races. Okay, cool. All right. But we got culture. We got, we got creativity. We got a mind that we can create. You know, somebody would have told me I had a, relationship podcast five years ago, I'd have been like, I lie like hell, you know what I'm saying? But if 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 it's a situation where I can control and create my own destiny, why not do it? And I think that uh nobody's gonna pay you more than you'll pay yourself. For sure. That's why so. you should become an entrepreneur also. <laughs> for let, sure. Let, let, on that. let me say this in respect to what Brother Ugly Money just said. The role that you take to get to your destiny is never gonna be the ones that get you there. It's gonna be your detour. Mm hmm if I could put each and every one of us in a crystal ball and I told you that y'all was gonna have it at the table, y'all would have never imagined that. If right. I told you that Pim and Ken would be, you know, running a, a hip hop fraternity, I would have never imagined that. So that's one thing that everyone needs to learn in life is that the road that you take, you know, it's never gonna be the ones that get you to your destiny. It's gonna be the detours. So detours in life is good. Yeah. Uh, uh, COVID, man, 
rich. I made millions. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, I had to detour, I had to pivot at that point. I said, okay, how do I how do I uh I navigate this situation? And I opened up a cologne business and uh and I opened up right at a place where everybody had where they were selling tennis tennis shoes. I made so much money, I was doing a hundred thousand dollars a month just selling cologne right there, you know, at, at and because every the stimulus check that came out. And, you know, black folks mm -hmm. don't know what to do with their money. <laughs> so, <laughs> so spend it. Yeah. So I was there to show them what to do with the money. <laughs> and I made a fat, I made a fat bankroll off of that, you know, and that's what Ugly Money was saying. So, you know, uh, I agree with you, brother. Yeah, and, but, that, but that goes back to a lot of times men operate better in chaos. COVID was an uncertain time for everybody. We didn't know what happened. Bro, I was a club promoter. How the hell am I going to do club promotion and no clubs are open? You got to figure something else out. And, I, and then I was like, well, okay, what am I good at? I'm good at promotion. I'm good at getting the word out. I'm good at marketing. All right, cool. Well, I've always marketed for other people's businesses. But now I need my own business so I can market for myself. And that's what brought me financial freedom. When I actually built my own business to use my God-given talent or God-given gift of marketing to push my joint, Man, we did strength. You can use your own strength to make your own money. Man, brother. And we That's can't, why we you both, can be an entrepreneur. Anybody can. We both can. came up with the concept, right? Because, you know, when I initially started Hip Hop Fraternity, I was pushing artists, 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 artists. And we both came to the conclusion at the same time, now we got to push yourself. You know, and once I started pushing myself, I got calls from my brother here from uh, Eight at the Table, uh, Drink Champs, you know, uh, Breakfast Club, and the business started to morph. You know, started to go into another direction. Because so. the bigger you are, pimp, the more opportunities you can give others. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And so sometimes, Same unfortunately, yeah, you. yeah, for yeah. sure. So sometimes, you know, we're so busy trying to get all the homies in, like, hey, man, we, I, let me slip through the back door so I can open up the front door for you guys. And a lot of times, we be trying to sneak everybody through the back door. Mm -hmm. Man, somebody's phone going to go off. Somebody's <laughs> going to knock. We're going to jail. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if, we, if you slip through the back door and you can open up the front door so everybody can come in, and so, you know, that's that's why that's why we're here. That's why we, you know, we're moving around the way we're moving. Yeah, that speaks to the importance of not gatekeeping and giving these Ooh. secrets out. I, I think that in a conversation we had with, I had with Ken the first time we spoke on the phone, he's the one, and I, I came back and told all you guys, we were like, yo, this is a gold rush, this is this, but the problem that's going to probably make a lot of us not become, like, very rich off of this is not the ability to collaborate. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, so can we speak to the, the, the importance of not gatekeeping our information and our secrets so we can all bring each other up? Okay, I'll go first. Okay, so my philosophy, and I talked to Ugly Money as well as Ate at the Table. I said, look, we can see the analytics, right? We understand, you know, what the metrics is on each one of our uh, platforms. Why don't we collaborate? And then when we collaborate, at, at, we can then split the profits on what we generate from our specific show. So in other words, what I'm saying, if I can get my show on eight at, uh, eight at the Table or we get an Ugly Money platform or on my platform, we can all share those platforms, then we can use the same video times three and we can make three times the money that we make. You know, like, and, and I got multiple videos. I don't gatekeep. You know, I, I, most of the time what I do on YouTube is I explain to people how to make money on YouTube. You know, when to share your videos. When you upload your videos, upload it as uh, unlisted. That way you can see if you get the green check or the yellow check. You know, just different small tactics that I yeah. tell young brothers, you know, to try to get them the wisdom because, you know, his success is my success. Y'all's success is our success. And that's what we got to start focusing at. You know what I'm saying? You know, you never see uh, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg arguing with each other. Actually, they back, he, uh, uh, Bill Gates owns stock in, 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 in Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Ironically speaking. You know what I'm saying? I should own stock in Ugly Money. I should own stock in hey, at the table. I should own stock at, at Pivot Kid Podcast or at my company. You know, in my, my, we're, we're currently what we're doing is we're doing an equity partnership with a lot of, you know, uh, Floyd Mayweather. We talked to him. We talked to uh, uh, Ice-T. And all these guys are going to become equity partners in my company. Same thing with 50 Cent did with uh, Vitamin water. So these guys would actually be partners, and I would give them shares because I have a C corp. You know what I'm saying? That means that I have shares, I have unlimited amount of shares, and I can place them at whatever value I want to. So those that value would be a uh, 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 kind of like placed over there. And then if they begin to help scale my business, 
in that stock was scaled as well, and they'd be able to profit it from what, what we're doing at, at, at my company, right? You know, and uh, that's what we do. It did also, you know, we're looking for investors, you know, because that's how money is really moved in the market, you know, is through investment. You know, we have to invest in each other, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that investment, those marketing dollars, those investment dollars, called capitalization or get marketed cap or make give you capital so you can capitalize to make your business move a little bit more smoothly. Mm -hmm. You know, and but but you know, we so caught up in, you know, all this, you know, crab mentality. I always say, you know, man, crabs in the buckets is real. Mm -hmm. But you never hear about the crabs in the ocean. Why hey. they never don't pull each other? You know what I'm saying? You don't never hear the crabs in the ocean trying to pull another crab. You know, they let them go and, and everybody win, you know, and that's what I, I believe about, you know, uh, collaboration. I think uh, my take on gatekeeping is uh, I give you the game. Don't mean you're going to use it. What, what? It don't hurt me none to give you some information. Mm -hmm. You got to actually physically get up and go do it. Do you have the personal, for, you know, the intestinal fortitude to do it? You got the work ethic to do it? Are you going to actually get up and make it happen? I don't mind you ask me a question, I'm gonna tell you, hey, you gotta do it like this, you gotta do it like this. All right, make sure that this this video is labeled and make sure your thumbnails are good and you know your video should do better if your titles are great. If you don't shoot content, you're not gonna have a hit podcast mm -hmm. and vice versa. But I think that the main misconception and sometimes in our culture is people want handouts. And there's a difference between gatekeeping and a person wanting Doing a handout. Work for it is not my job yeah. to pull you up out the mud. The fact that you saw me in the mud a year ago and you you saw me get up out of it, that's me showing you that it's possible. If you're lucky enough for me to leave you a rope down there, the same rope that I, you know, climb myself up out of there, that's okay. But it's not my job. And a lot of people want you to pull them, stop what you're doing, stop your journey, stop your process, pull them up out the mud, here you go, bro. Wash them off and take them. No, bro. No, because nobody did that for me. I cannot stop my process of what I'm doing in my life for you. All I can do is be a beacon of hope to let you know that this shit is attainable. I've done it, so that means you can do it. And if you're lucky, I'll leave you a rope so you can <laughs> pull yourself up out. And I just think that sometimes we are looking for people to do things for ourselves, for us, that we're not willing to do for ourselves. And I think that's why a lot of individuals don't become but successful. You know, what's so significant about what you just said, brother, is that, you know, through my journey, and my son's journey in the business uh, world, you know, as many people as I brought up, you know, we talked about that on an early segment, you know, those people, they just, they just wasn't ready, you know. And, uh, you know, I believe that, you know, success is a mindset. You got to want it, you got to believe it, you got to achieve it. And a lot of people, man, no matter how much or how hard you try to bring them from the, uh, you know, they, you know, from the bottom, you know, they just, you know, they, they just won't pass that threshold you were talking about. Sure. You Absolutely. say you get them to ninety five percent, and they'll drop. I get them to, I get them to, I get them to ninety nine. You get them to ninety nine, and then they self destruct. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. they want to go all the way back to ninety five because that's their comfort zone. So I. I've never been a gatekeeper of information. I'm more like, I like to assist folks, but now I'm getting a little more selective. You know, like Nietzsche said, people just really want you to do all the work. So just be selective and just, if someone, you know, just just gauge it out if they're worthy of it, just throw them the bone, man. Here, man, boom. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Use I'm, me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah, Use we, me. We're right, holding man. information. First, ask me in the street, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you still got to do it. Like if like mm -hmm. if you owned a, a a million dollar coat business, and I'm like, yeah, bro, teach me the game. And you like, okay, you got to do this. You got to get your vendor over here. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay. Then a year later, I don't do nothing. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> Rico a gatekeeper because I still ain't got no million dollar coat business like him because I didn't do the work. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like people still got to get up and do the work. I also think I also think when it comes to gatekeeping on. Another aspect is it's very hard for our, our community to believe in each other to raise capital. Okay. Right? But we don't, do, I, do we have it at all together? Nah, I, I, you know, I used to, we, we're the most spending community in this country. True. We got it. Yeah. Like, we're, we got it. We just learn how to give it back, right? So I think... Um, but, like, but do we know how to raise capital? 
And that's what I'm saying. See, see. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay nephew, check me out. I had to hire a young lady by the name of Kentry. She's my COO. She put together a pitch deck, right? And it details everything about our business, you know, our projections, so on and so forth. And usually you have to get that to a broker. And a broker goes out, they shop that to venture capitalists, angel capitalists, private equity, you know, hedge funds, so on and so forth. If we don't understand Latin, see, business is Latin. Mm -hmm. When you say, I got an LLC, I laugh at you because a LLC is a limited liability corporation. You go to a bank, you say, I got an LLC, they laugh at you. You know why? It's equivalent to saying, seeing a beautiful woman, she got brown eyes, she got pretty dark hair, she got pretty brown complex skin, she got a nice little shape. But she say, I want to date you, but you can't have sex or you can't kiss me. But she's limited. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's, how, that's how they look at you when you go into the bank. But when you say I'm a C Corp, or you say I'm an S Corp, or you show that you know that you got structure and you got you understand corporate governance, you understand, you know, uh, bank language, a certain language that they speak that is called Latin, that is nothing even comparable to what you can imagine you speak. Then you could get those things happening. Do you know what Don and Bradstreet is? Do you know what a pay a pay day pay net? net? Yeah, yeah. You do you know what that is? Do you know all these just simple things that you know that goes with the business? Do you know how many points is that Don and Bradstreet? Do you you say I got a seven eighty? That don't mean nothing to a business credit. You got to have at least a, a fifty or better. It goes to eighty one to hundred. It's a different it's a different metric system. If you don't understand that, you understand how to write proposals. You don't know how to do pitch decks. Then all this stuff that everybody talking is just mumbo jumbo. Yeah, you know, and I and I hear it all the time. And being I'm I deal with corporate people all the time. I got people with you know PhDs and MBAs. All this in my company, right? You know, what I'm saying I I have I had to learn and I and I and I learned that hey man, you know, business is a whole different conversation. You know, so it, like Nishi said, if you do bang them up and you put them in the game, and they don't understand Latin, which is what business is. You know, when I Remember I told you earlier that I, I did my own uh, 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 appeal? Mm -hmm. yeah. When I went to court, I had to say I represent myself pro se. If you don't say pro se, which is a lot, which means you represent yourself, you know what I'm saying? And you say, I'm here, I represent myself. You say, either you got a fool for a lawyer or you got a, 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 a client for a fool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, cause they, you, got, you got to understand the language. And that's why a lot of black folks don't succeed in business because they don't understand. I got I made out a list of 300 words that I give to all my uh, executives so they can understand these basic common terminologies that's in business. You know what I'm saying? So when they communicating and certain words come up and they understand, you know, because, you know, those people say something, it go right over your head. You know, you've been in those meetings. You know how that is, how they talk. So you got to know that stuff. If you don't know it, you know, you're not going to be able to get those deals. And people say, man, how did you get those deals with all these companies? Because I understand corporate governance. I understand. And contracts, Ken. Yeah. The way, the way contract. they paragraph stuff in contracts, it'll mean something totally different than what you're reading. Man, I lost <laughs> I lost real. millions of dollars because of one word. You know what that word was? Revert. So my first that be, a book deal I was telling you about, I did. So they had a, a clause in there that said revert to 5% after it goes from paperback to hard. So the hard book, I had to go for hard copy paperback. I didn't understand that word. I went up there, I said, where my money at? They said, you don't have no money. Got reverted. I said, what do you mean? He said, it reverted to 5%. <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? At that juncture, I went and I created Damn. a contract. No, don't feel sorry for me because it's the good part of the story. So they taught me a lesson. I, I put together another contract, yeah. and that contract was I wanted to buy the total rights of my audio book. So if you go and you look up Pimp and Ken on the audio, it's my name, Ken Ivey. I own 100%. You know, imagine nobody has ever really done that, took 100% of their audio rights back from a major company like CBS you know, for uh, Simon Schuster. But I wrote a contract, I offered them an offer, and I went up there and I put a clause in there, you know, that says that the money, the future revenues for this uh, payment would come from the future revenues that I would get from Pimpology, the book, right? So it was five lawyers in there. I went in there, I signed... Uh, I, I act like I was signing endorsing the check. I flipped it over. When I flipped it over, I, I passed them the contract. They looked at the contract. They signed it. They called me back. My publisher company said, Ken, uh, you didn't endorse the check. I said, did they read the contract? 
I said, with the contract, I said, with the money, y'all got to pay them the money. They said, what? These are Harvard graduates, lawyers. And they would say, how the hell did he do it? It was out. The, the CEO called me personally, talked to me. He said, Mr. Ivy, we want you to work with us. Yeah. I became a literary agent for Simon Schuster. I, because they respected my mind. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I was able to get, man, you know how many millions of dollars I made off the audio yeah. book? You know what I'm saying? They, they, like, they lost money. He was like, I want to meet the digger. That got the motherfucker me. that got Simon <laughs> Schuster, they, they're all these lawyers, and 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 you think I'm lying? Go and look at at, at my paper, my book. I own 100 percent right of it, and I did it legitimately. They taught me the game. You know what I'm saying? Me. So what I'm saying, I had to learn corporate governance. I had to learn corporate language. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn how to how to write, and I put a Jewish lawyer name under that. I I, I put Steinberg. <laughs> they thought they, they they thought they thought it was my lawyer, but it was me. I copy and pasted yeah, yeah. Off, of, off of Google. I Google and copy and paste. So I'm just saying, you know. So my question is: Is our school the gatekeeper? Because no, school is the worst thing. Why would you go to school to learn when you could to earn when you could be earning without learning? No. So what I'm saying is, right? Hear me out. We're talking as adults, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I would I would argue 75 percent don't know business literacy. No, people. because, bro, let me tell you something. They don't teach that in school. But they don't teach you Latin in, 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 business, yeah. in business school, but they teach you how to become a worker. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's why Golden Sachs and, and, and uh, Chase Manhattan and all of these major corporations is sitting there at your graduation because they want to pick you to become a slave. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, bro, the same amount of time that you spend Eight hours a day making yep. somebody else rich would be the same amount of time it would take to run your company. I always thought it was funny that you had to have a college degree to work at Apple, but Steve Jobs was a college dropout. You didn't need a college degree to work at Apple. I'm talking about like in the early days when they was talking about formulating Apple and actually making the beginning. those guys like you know to, to work at these big companies. A lot of times you they want they want degrees and things, but the, the CEOs of the companies are. I don't know. Education out. changed my life. Yeah, I'd rather be the I, CEO I went then. Degree electronics engineering, and that's how I was able to. Oops, sorry about that. That's how I was able to, uh, you know, reach reach a better salary income to invest in my. You know what I'm saying? But it's still what, what I'm doing. Mentality, right? No, it doesn't. But but I tell you what, though, it, it prepared me for certain things. No, you was you already know. prepared. Yeah. All all yeah, that, yeah. All, all I yeah. did was give you the sheepskin. Let me tell you something that I know for a fact. This one thing I learned for a fact. This is a fact. And this ain't that whatever they gave me talking, right? <laughs> I feel kind of good though, man. Whatever that is, I need some more of that. Man, okay, you got some more of that. Hey, Wait, but no, no, no. On, on, I know for a fact, and this is for a fact, that the A and B, A plus C, B plus students work for the so C and D students. Mm -hmm. For the sure. College dropout. For sure. So the worst students got the smartest people working. For sure. What's wrong with that picture? <laughs> well, not every, not 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 everyone's capable of, you know, getting information so quick and just you know some people are really gifted, so they really don't. You know what I mean, they really don't need an education. So it's just how you just got to really fill yourself out. How much drive you got? How much you want to learn? What you really want to do in life? If you can pinpoint that out at an early age. You winning, man. Well, there's a difference between being smart and being intelligent by definition, right? If you yeah, focus on the end right. So there's a lot of smart people who get a, a and Bs, which really just means the ability to know. But that doesn't mean what you know is right. It just means what you know can work or can work against you. But intelligence simply just means the ability to understand. Yeah. So if I have the ability to understand. To know. To know. That's what it, intelligence comes from. The root word is knowledge, and knowledge means to know. That's all it means is to know. You know, and if you know how, what, what I've learned, and just being the CEO of Hip Hop Fraternity, I've learned this, and this is stuff, and this is ironclad. You know, I learned that uh, you can go to any university, you can go to anywhere, shoot smart people at, you can hire them to work for you. You don't have to know how to do anything. For sure. You just know how to obtain and acquire a special And, and if you gotta if know you're, how to structure a, a yeah. business. Yeah, if, if you you're a smart to CEO. Together, you gotta know who you're hiring. Yeah, if you're a smart you owner and a smart CEO, you. you're going to hire people that are smarter than you. I don't want anybody that's worse than me in my company. I purposely, my camera, when I used to do content, my cameraman now, he's way better than I ever was. My co-host, I believe he's better than, he's a better host than I am. Why would I pay somebody that does something worse than me? No, you, I'm going to pay you 
to do what you do amazing, and I'm going to look like the genius mm -hmm. because now it's like, oh, he can walk on water. No, my team is strong because I hired everybody that's better than me. Or whatever I'm weak at, I'm going to hire somebody that's strong at it. Right. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just common sense. Common in the, sense. In the, I think that also in a creation way, mm -hmm. it helps, though, the fact that you did these different things, right? So because you were behind the camera, being better than you is going to be harder than if you knew nothing. True. Right? There's a lot of people who hire somebody who knows more than them because they know nothing. But that doesn't make them a great employee for your business and for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, but when you do have this experience, right, in front of the camera, yeah. behind the camera, mm -hmm. in all different areas, um, then when it, when it comes to vetting the person that's right for that job to help expand the company, you have a lot of more experience, which helps. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think it's important to, to know what is necessary in that role. True. Right? Because, like, if I go in there blind and I hire somebody, my thing is this. People also go with the narrative. If I hire somebody, I want to hire somebody that's smarter than me in that particular mm -hmm. role. But there's a lot of people smarter than you if you know nothing in that role. True. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, there's people who will go ahead and spend thousands of dollars on marketing but that's because they know nothing right. and get no results, right? <laughs> they get, no, they get yeah. zero results, right. right? And it's only because they know nothing. Right. But if they knew something, yeah. then it'll be a lot better for their vetting process. So I, I do think that there has to be a level of knowledge within everything that you're doing as a business owner, sure. right? You have to know how all the pieces move up. The be this is from football. The best players in football know the roles of every position, sure. right? If I know the roles of everything moving around, I know how to make it fit the play. I know how to call the play. I know right. how to quarterback the play. You know what I'm saying? So um, I just want to also put that out there as well. Yeah. And I think, I think it's smart for us to also empower our people. Um, I could teach a good person how to run that camera. What I can't do is teach an amazing cameraman how to be a good person. So a lot of, a lot of times in my company, I've hired from within. I I rather teach my brother something that you know I may see something in him that he may not have saw it himself. You know, my 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 head of security is my is was was I was in the military. We went to war together. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? He was always the first one that wanted to shoot something. Well, you know what? You might be great. You might be great at this job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and you know my my cameraman. He you know he he's you know, my videographer. Excuse me, cinematographer. He don't like it when I call him. That. Um, you know. He, he's a person that was always the first person to pull out the phone for content and things of that nature. I'm like, okay, I see that you have a knack for this. Let me teach you what I know so that way your natural talent, you can flourish and become, you know, even better at it. And I think that's some things, especially in business, that we need to start doing is instead, instead of always looking for someone that is above and beyond our level, find somebody that really – you know, believes in what you got going and grow with that person and you'd be amazed at how far you get because that person genuinely wants to see you win. And that is priceless in my opinion because that person's going to go way harder for you than the person that's just coming there for the check. And that, that exact phrase translates into relationships as well. Find somebody that goes just as hard about you as you mm -hmm. would for them mm. and you are just as passionate it's the same goals. Um, so this has been a great talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got drug into this, but. No, nah, <laughs> we enjoyed you. We enjoyed you. Go ahead and just uh, give them your socials. Tell them where they can find you. Oh, I got a few. Uh, we'll start off with Dave G, iconic designer on Instagram. Um, Bossmatic champion status. Uh, DJ Bossmatic. I DJ too. I just love, you know, I'm part of the hip-hop culture. It's been my, been my life. So uh, I got into the branding aspect of everything and got a little more creative and uh yeah or just google boss matic b-o-double-s-m-a-t-i-c and you'll see what we got going on shout out to the dog pound uh big a dash corrupt we all we got we about to elevate new project coming out hhf we got that banging and booming that's it all right sounds good well, fellas, we thank you for coming to Eight at the Table and sharing your knowledge on relationships. Oh, I get my promo in too. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I Follow me, too. Ugly Buddy Nietzsche, Ugly Money N I C H E. Uh, you can catch me live on Country Wayne Skit Series. 
Uh, it's a war going on outside. Make sure y'all go to Countryway, all its platforms. It's, uh, it's dropping. Actually, one just dropped today. And of course, Ugly Fest is going down July 12th through the 14th. We're giving away $10,000 cash to the hottest independent artist, and it's free to perform. So you can actually come to Atlanta and win 10 grand if you can perform good. Uh, and also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube, uh, Ugly Money TV. Get us to 250. We had like 215. I'm trying to hit a quarter million by the end of this month. So make sure you tap in, and I appreciate y'all brothers for having us, man. That was dope. Hey, how y'all doing, man? Once again, I'm Ken Ivy, man. Hey, man, shout out to whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> it got me mellow. <laughs> I'm mellow. Yeah, I'm chilling. Hit, My man. birthday is in two days. I had to have me a sip. You know, y'all know I don't drink, but hey, man, I'm feeling good right now. Thanks to the uh, eight at the table. It's some good brothers, man. You know, we've been trying to make this happen for a long time. Thank God that we finally got it done. I ain't know they live way out here in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they got a mansion, y'all. This is a mansion. Hey, so if y'all get invited, come on. Hey, hey, they, <laughs> hey, and they give you some stuff to keep you busy for a yeah. minute too. You know? Rico, I, I, I've been looking forward to meeting you, Rico, because I always saw you in your content. I'm like, he's fair, and I do appreciate the fact. The matter is that, like. Your whole men let me say my, let me say my Instagram first. Oh, my bad, kid. My bad. My bad. My bad. Go ahead. Yeah. Bad. You know I'm feeling good. You know I'm finna start talking shit to you. You better chill out, everybody. It's gonna be a war for this motherfucker, man. Hey, so real pimp kid underscore and go get my book at audiobook.com. Type in the name Pimp and Ken, and all my books will come up. And hey, man, I'ma pass the mic to my brother. Yeah. Okay. I, I appreciate you guys. You 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 guys are fair. I, I know I lean hard on one side, and so sometimes when I used to see your content, I'd be like, whose side is he on? But I think you're on the side of righteousness, brother. And I yeah, salute thank you. you for that. Oh, thank I you for the experience. You, this is my Thanks. first uh, sitting in podcast like this. I just thought about this. You should do a podcast. We yeah. told you, you should. Yeah.